Welcome GDLers, this is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim. Today we're going to start adding the user interface to our library part that we've been working on for the last few episodes. The user interface is the finishing touches to your library part. It gives it that little extra boost to make it look much more professional and a lot more intuitive for the end user. It makes your part stand out. It's the icing on the cake. So grab yourself a coffee and let's script some GDL. Open your help. It can be found under Help Documentation and GDL Reference Guide. That will open the PDF version. And the online version can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on Reference Guide. You will find the user interface help under Nine Non Geometric Scripts and the user interface. All of your statements and commands are in this section here. And you'll notice that all of the user interface statements are prefixed with a UI and an underscore. So that's kind of a giveaway there. So we'll open our object by selecting it and going Control Shift and O, or on a Mac it's Command Shift O. You can also do that under the File menu, Libraries and Objects, Open Object, or it's with this button here on your toolbar. We'll restore down. I'll shift the tab to the end just for sake of organizing it. And we are interested in the interface script here. So the interface script has the main dialog portion and it also has a duplicate pop out dialog. Now, although the content of these dialogs is exactly the same, you'll notice that the main dialog has three extra buttons here preview set as default and hierarchical pages and I'll talk about those a bit later. So we'll just have a look at the user interface itself. This is just a standard Graphisoft object, bed layout 26, and it's a pretty nice interface made up of the title, the menu navigation buttons, the menu itself, and you can see that this has collapsible hierarchical menus to it and the canvas. Now the canvas size, although the help says the canvas size is 444 by 296, this is incorrect. It's actually 480 by 266 pixels in size. And we've got various elements placed on this canvas. Any text is a UI outfield statement. This would be a UI infield. This also is a UI infield. This would be a UI picked for a picture. And as we go through the different menus, this is a UI infield. This is a UI infield. This is a UI infield. So the infield can be used in lots of different ways for lots of different formats. But you can make your interface very useful to help the user understand how to use your object. So let's have a look at our object here. We've got our check script button. We know what that is. This little button here, preview, lets us have a look at how our interface is progressing. At the moment, we've got nothing in it. And if we have a look at our object, you would be very familiar. All we've got is this custom settings with our parameters in the raw, so to speak. So, how do we get the interface to be activated? And it's very simple. All you need to do is add something to it. So what we'll do is we'll put in a UI outfield. So let's have a look at what a UI outfield looks like. Here it is. The syntax is UI outfield with an expression, an X position, a Y position, and then optional width, height, and flags. I won't worry about these at the moment, but let's go UI outfield and the first statement you always make when learning something hello world and we'll go zero zero UI outfield need to make sure I've got a little comma here as well because that is the syntax comma after the expression preview hello world all right let's save this have another look at our object 
And straight away we can see we've got a menu system thrown in here that I can choose my custom settings and there's my outfield. Now it's important to point out that the coordinate system in your dialog is just slightly different to the coordinate system in your modeling environment. So it starts 0, 0 at the top left corner. X is in the right direction, positive right. But Y, positive, is going down the interface. So 0, 0 is where we placed our outfield. So it's 0, 0 anchor point is at the top left of the outfield and the 0, 0 canvas point is at the top left of the canvas. So let's see if we can add another page to this interface. The statement is UI page, page number. And you can see that we have the option of adding a parent ID and a page title. So let's just see what happens. We'll go UI page, page ID of one, and let's add a, another page, UI page 2, and we'll add another outfield. We'll say page 2, page 1. All right, let's preview that. So we've got nothing coming up here. We can't navigate between our pages. This is where our hierarchical pages comes into it. If I activate my hierarchical pages, now preview, I've got two pages here. They don't have any titles at the moment, but we'll get to that. The important thing is that if I click on the page one, we've got page one, click on page two, I've got page two. Let's just put this in a different location. Let's say 10 and 50, just so that we can see the difference. Page two, page one. If I save that, look at my object, I've got my menu system here with page one, it's got my page one, page two, it's got my page two. You'll notice, however, that every time I open the object, it's defaulting to this all parameters down the bottom here. I want it to open on the user interface. So that's where this button comes in, set as default. So if now when I save that, open up my object, it's defaulted to my user interface. So that's what those two buttons are for. Set as default, opens to the user interface by default, and hierarchical pages, it activates the Archicad menu system in your object. So I've got those two, but they're not very helpful at the moment, are they? Let's have a look at what our options are. We want a page title, and we need to add a parent ID before we add a page title. So in this case, we will just add a parent ID of minus one. And minus one is the root menu, the very top menu. So it's a good number to remember. And we will call this page one, very inventive. And we will call this page two. So let's preview that. Page one, page two. There we go. There's our two names. And we can see that as we click between them, the content is changing. It's not very much there at the moment, but you know these are the fundamentals that we need to set up. That's good. Typically what you do with an object is you have your settings page first, dimensions and settings. So we'll say settings, and then we'll have our attributes page second. So we'll go attributes, settings and attributes. And we also like to have a little icon next to the menu item. So if we have a look at the Graphisoft one down here, we can see that each menu item has a little icon next to it just to help with the intuitiveness of the part. So it'd be good if we could do the same thing. Every icon, every picture that you have in the object needs to be loaded into the project library. Graphisoft have a whole heap already for all of their parts. So if we have a look at Archicad library, Archicad library, LCF, object library, macros, and U image, IS maps. Open that. And what we're after is the tab 18 by 18, and that refers to the pixel size, 18 by 18 pixels. And we can see we've got quite a few here that we can use. 
Now, although I'm going to use these for this part here because they're there, I would advise that if you're doing specific parts that you extract the LCF file, copy all these images to your company library and just slightly change the name, maybe prefix it with your company letters. Because what happens is that version to version, Graphisoft can change the names of these icons and then they will no longer appear in your part if you're relying on the Graphisoft parts. But in this case, it's okay. So what we are after is this one here, UI tab dimension H1. And we're after this one here, UI tab 3D rep. We'll have a look at the syntax again, page number, parent ID, we've got that page title and now image. So the image for the first one will be UI tab dimension HL, not one, version one or copy one. Let's have a look. Preview. There it is. We've got our little icon next to our settings page. So for attributes, we'll add our selected icon. Check the script. Script is OK. Preview. There we go. So let's save and have a look. There's our interface with our menus. And you see here that the all parameters is still visible. Now there is a way to get rid of that. My recommendation is to always leave it there because it's always good to have access to the raw parameters just in case the interface isn't working correctly. It's just a nice, nice thing to keep there. But to get rid of that, what we do is we come to our parameter script and we do hide parameter all. And we want to leave A, B, and Z, Z, Y, Z, X visible, but the rest of them we want to hide. So we'll save that, have a look, and we can see that we only have our two menus available. But as I say, I prefer to leave the all parameters showing for the user. So we've got those in place. Let's add a title to our dialog. And that statement is UI dialog. And it's pretty simple syntax, dialog with a title and an optional size X and size Y. It says here that size X and size Y parameters are not used. So don't know what they're there for. And this is where they define the wrong size for the canvas. And if we leave those undeclared, it will fit the maximum size. So let's have a look. UI dialog. And we'll call it BDB Desk, Barking Dog BIM Desk. Preview, here it is, it's changed the title up here. We'll save it. And it's changed our title up here. So we've got the fundamentals in place, the fundamental structure in place for our interface. I'll just add some comments, some header and footer commenting, like I've done in the other scripts, simply for legibility. Now, one of the things we need to add is a parameter called GS UI current page, and that needs to be an integer. You can leave it blank, but I'll just put in current page and we'll set its value to one. This is a global variable that Archicad uses to tell you which page you're on and how to navigate between the pages. And now in the interface script, under our dialog declaration, UI current page. And what's the syntax for that? It's UI current page with the page index. And it's the definition of the current tab page to display. UI current page, GS UI current page. Now with the Graphisoft object it had submenus, so a hierarchical structure. The way you achieve that is with the UI page statement. So we've got page and this will be page, let's call it page 3. Syntax is UI page, page number, parent ID, page title and image. So we'll call it page 3, parent page, we will make page 1. We'll call it sub page one and we'll leave the image blank because I'm just demonstrating how to do this. And if we have a look at our preview, we now have a sub page 
under our settings. Now this doesn't have to go here, it can go right at the end and it will still be in the right place because of the numbers I've given it here. So if I make this page 3 and this page 2, it's still there because I've given it the correct parent number. If, however, I give these two the same number, we've got a bit of a problem. The script can't work out what to do. So you need to make sure that your pages have a unique number. Let's just take this one step further. Subpage 2. So it's still under the parent page of 1. So now we have settings with a collapsible selection and we've got subpage 1, subpage 2. There's nothing on them, but the menu structure is set up. So that's how you achieve the hierarchical subpages. Now, before we get too much further down the track, we need to organize our script to keep it nice and tidy and legible. And in a previous video, I talked about how to organize your script with a header script and subroutines under that. So I'll just do that now. So let's check, make sure it still works. Settings, attributes. Good. Now script is nice and organized. And so each subroutine now relates to a page. So I'll wrap this one up there. That's a nice bite-sized chunk for you to start to get your head around how the user interface works, how to set up your menu system. And we'll continue this in the next episode.